Alright, so, uh, welcome to my first Let's Look At video, and this is for Galaxy The Dimensional, a new game by 17-bit which has just been released for, or on Steam um, for Windows, Mac, and Linux, and that is a simultaneous Windows, Mac, and Linux release. Of course, the game was first released on the PS4, um, but after the exclusivity agreement with Sony ran out, um, they have now been able to release on Steam. Um, you know, of course, I can. Well, I'm going to talk a little bit about my background with this game. Uh, I saw this game in various stages of development. Uh, first at Bit Summit 2014 and Bit Summit 2015. Um, because 17-bit is a Kyoto developer, uh, most of the the staff members at 17-bit um, are actually um, foreigners, but they live here in Kyoto, and uh, they, you know, have been regular presenters at at Bit Summit of, of this game. Um, and I can say that in 2014, when I first played the game, it was running on a PC and not on a PS4. So <laughs> it's not like they had to do um, a ton of porting work to get it working from the PS4 onto uh, the PC platform um, because they I think that was the main development platform and then they ported it to PS4 released it and then went ahead with their original platform which was uh, PC um, and by PC I mean well probably Windows but uh, work, seems to work fine on Linux as well um, and that is the main reason why I wanted to talk about this game, and I went ahead and requested a press code, uh, because this is a, maybe, it's, it's an indie title, but it's got really high production values, and it's a type of gameplay that I'm going to demonstrate for you that, you know, just isn't available um, anywhere on Linux except here in this game. Um, of course, it is inspired to some extent by roguelite games, but the actual way that the ship maneuvers um, is very unlike most of the games that are out there that I can think of, really. Um, and the art style is certainly um, something that is quite unique as well. Uh, it seems to be inspired by sort of early 80s era Japanese um, space action anime and actually if we go ahead and take a look at the credits you can see this really cool credit screen right it's got uh, uh, you know this old sort of VHS -y, um screen and it's it's a little bit distorted to look like a CRT um, screen and has that tracking at the top where you can see all the fuzz tracking effect which you may be familiar with from something like um, Far Cry Blood Dragon uh, but you know used to good effect here uh, if you look at the display options it's very very much like what my old TV used to look like um, in the options menu and uh, Quality level is high, medium, low, and resolution you can see is 1080 60, uh, 1080 p 60, and then we've got uh, full screen, on or off. Those are your only options. It's not very sophisticated. Um, audio options very basic, and then languages are English, Espanol, Francais, Italiano, and uh, Deutsch. And then finally English, but no Japanese, so I was a little bit surprised by that, but uh, this is all I guess you need for a European release. Um, anyway, um, I guess a Japanese release might be forthcoming in this region, although again, PC gaming, still not that big here in Japan. Uh, right, so let's take a look at the game. Um, the difficulty... You can see, you know, there's uh, the arcade difficulty and rogue difficulty. Arcade difficulty is something that was added in the Steam release. Um, it is, so after every mission you get a checkpoint, you can save, and then if you die, you can, you know, return to where you were in the game. Rogue is more roguelite-ish. Uh, the way I think it works is that it saves for you after every mission you complete. 
However, if you die, then you go back to the beginning of the game or back to the beginning of the season. So there's five seasons in the game, right? And then five missions to every season. So if you clear, you know, one, two, or sorry, one, 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 two, one, three, one, four, one, five, and then you get to two, one, if you die in rogue mode, you will go back to two, one. Uh, however, you can save after any of the missions and then come back to it. Uh, you know, sort of like in Isaac, uh, I Binding of Isaac Rebirth, where if you die, um, you go back to the beginning of the game, but you can also quit the game and save whenever you like, um, just so that you can pick up the game again and continue your run. Uh, and in this case, it's not quite like that, but after every mission, which, you know, each mission seems to be about five to ten minutes long, um, you can uh, save and then come back to the game later. So we're going to go ahead and do rogue mode because checkpoints after every season and a challenge for even the most hardcore gamer, the way Galaxy was meant to be played. So of course we're going to do that, right? Uh, I was already working on a save just to test out this game, but we'll go back to um, Season 1. Yeah, let's uh, do that. And we'll skip the intro. It's very cool, I can assure you. But uh, you're going to have to buy the game or watch another video to check that out. Um, and uh, this is our ship here, the USS Axelios. Um, on the left is our main character, and on the right is like our control, like the character who gives us our missions and stuff. We need warp crystals. Hey kid, looks like you picked up some of my lucky crash coins while you were out. Let me take those off your hands for some crucial salvage. Right, so we've got some salvage here. And we can use that to purchase abilities for our ship. And you can see at the bottom left the cost in scrap. You know, every mission you're going to get scrap, and then you can use that to buy stuff. This uh, vendor screen actually reminds me a lot of the vendor screen from uh, UN Squadron on the SNES. And I asked one of the developers um, when I spoke to them at uh, Bit Summit if that was the inspiration, but they said, oh, actually, that wasn't my area that I was working on, so I can't tell you. But they said they wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. That's what it reminds me of, at least. All right, so um, there's nothing I really need to buy here. Uh, do I have any missiles? I have full missiles. Um, I don't have quite enough to buy turbocharged, but I'll buy this. Oops, let's go back. Uh, we'll buy this. And then you can see it's added to our owned items. We don't need to um, add it here, but this, this is where you can adjust the types of shots you have using items. Um, and it's a little bit like what you might be familiar with from, say, uh, Gradius. And on the ship there, you can see the Skulls of the Shogun logo, logo uh, which is uh, a previous game made by 17-bit. And each, you know, mission is like an episode of a season. runs out of juice and the bugs, Imperials and pirates kill us. All together? If we're unlucky, yes. Crystal time it is. And they went so far as to um, actually like include a writer at the beginning. I like that touch. Uh, it does kind of feel like an old TV show, episodic content. Um, and here we are in the combat. Taking Imperial fire. <laughs> See ya. So once you kill enemies, Space you can junk. collect stuff from them. So, um, I think I got a little bit ahead of myself there in all the um, interesting action. This is a space 2D space combat game. Um, it is 
similar to asteroids in a way, in the way it controls, but um, essentially you have a forward thruster and a rear thruster, and you can brake using both thrusters. So already that is quite a bit more sophisticated than asteroids. <laughs> I, I would certainly hope it's more sophisticated than asteroids. Um, you also have a strafe, right? Um, and you have a, what is it called, juke? Use this to uh, avoid enemy shots. Fire, of course, you can fire. Blow up some asteroids for fun. Um, and then you have missiles. You can use to walk onto enemies and destroy groups of them. Very useful, but your missiles are limited, so you have to be careful about that. Uh, your laser shots are, of course, unlimited. Then at the bottom of the screen, you can see that we have four hit points um, in hull, and then two hit points in shields. If your shields are depleted, then your hull gets depleted, your shields come back, but your hull does not unless you get a repair. Um, the main thing about this game, I would say, that is very, very much unlike other games is the way it controls. Um, it is very challenging to control. I would not say it is hard to, like, I don't know. It's not that this is a poorly um, designed game with bad controls. It is a game that is trying to simulate that feeling of being in space and it has very tight controls, but that does not mean they are easy or intuitive to use. I still find myself having trouble using the uh, rear thrusters. Um, they just are not as intuitive as using, or sorry, the, yeah, the rear thrusters, and these are the forward thrusters, yeah. The forward thrusters are intuitive, the rear thrusters not so much. The braking, very much not intuitive. Uh, but that is just fine, because it's really a learning experience. Um, and, you know, I like a game like this that has some challenge to it. Oh. So, you can see I'm still at full life, because um, although my shields went down, th those things will bring your shields down if you collide with them. Um, although my shields went down, I still uh, recovered them before taking any hull damage. And they were just like collecting some stuff from their corpses, which we can use later to buy stuff at the store. That's kind of the game loop here. Um, so, another thing to note, we have a map, and pretty much every mission seems to take part place in one of these big asteroids. Um, and you explore it kind of like in other roguelite games, and I believe these uh, asteroid or interiors are um, procedurally generated. So that is kind of like the extent of the rogue influences on the game. Um, although there are, are, are a couple others, um, such as finding loot in the, uh, in the process of the, of the um, mission, and then that altering your run through the game. Um, you can see that the enemies and these bugs are fighting each other. Ow, shot. That's what the missiles look like. I love how when you hit enemies um, with missiles, there's an explosion and that forces you backwards. Of course, because of the um, gas expanding from the missile explosion. It's very cool. A dumb bug running into the spikes. And that's mine. Just very fun to um, explore the map, even because of uh, the challenges of maneuvering. I don't know what I would be saying once you get further into the game, it becomes more difficult. I have heard some people complain online that this game. It does get tedious towards the end, but just because it, it's kind of the same same old, same old again and again, um, in terms of the mission flow and everything, but, you know, just be 
based on my first impressions, which is all I can really offer you here, I think this is a very unique experience um, within gaming, but especially within Linux gaming. So for Linux gamers out there, this seems to be working very well, and I would uh, recommend it. Let's see if I can get this. Be very careful this time. You are asking oh, it's because for I'm full. <laughs> of course, my hull is full. I don't need a repair. Oh, oh dear. Shields. Hey. Wow, that's really cool. I like that bug. Come out. Come out and play. Crap. Shields blown. Let's do this. Is that just like an environmental hazard? No, it looks like a yeah, real enemy. No shields. Oh, it is on. There we go. I don't know if I got anything from that, but it was sure fun to kill. I like the little response you see on the uh, screen there to your character boosting. Uh, one thing I should note is that there is a bit of a stealth mechanic in the game. You can see there's a faint blue ring that appears around uh, the character when you um, engage your boosters. And the faster you're moving, the larger the ring. Um, and that will increase the chances of you being detected. What? I found a human! Stupid empire! The big boys. The big boys. So at this stage, obviously, game not too hard, but down to change. Target destroyed. Here's some loot. Sweet. Plus for missile capacity, so we're up to 24 max missiles maximum now, um, and as I said, that's that's an example of some of the loot that you can find in the game. I'm not too sure what these blue arrows on the screen are supposed to indicate. I don't know if that's supposed to be telling me where some loot is or what. Oh, there we go. So, you know, maybe somewhere else in the map uh, we can find the other half of this blueprint and then it is purchasable at the shop. So. That is another sort of rogue influence. Um, it's just finding stuff along the way and then altering your run. And then of course, what stuff you can find is um, procedurally generated as well. That's not gonna work. So let's go ahead and go back here. Let those guys fight. Each My other. shields are blown. Ah! Arrogant fist face, coming in hot. Later's. Yes. I'm hit. Bogey down. <laughs> Taking damage. The crystal is coming up. And it will be mine. Oh, yes. Get ready, little crystal. My shields are blown! I'm hit! Shields down! Hey! <laughs> yes! So now we have the plasma core available in the shop. Um, the dialogue during the fights is a little bit repetitive, but also pretty cool. Um, <laughs> Oh no! Um, the enemies, of course, are, you know, British Imperials. 
course they're British. They're evil. <laughs> yes. And that will alter our shots. This is, that is the kind of radius type um, fire upgrades that I was mentioning. I guess you could also maybe, maybe you're, no, uh, it's a little bit different from Thunder Force, but I would say it is definitely that Gradius influence there. I did not talk to the devs um, about that when I spoke to them because um, I wasn't aware of this whole upgrade aspect of the game until I actually got to play it um, for a longer stretch of time myself. But I wouldn't be surprised if that's where it came from. So now that the enemies are dead, we can just jet on out of here. Ooh, bye bye. <laughs> yes. So like in that situation, I should be using the rear boosters instead of turning around and then uh, using the forward boosters, but um, eh, <laughs> takes some getting used to, what can I say? that gave you a good sense of what Galaxy is all about um, and the quality of it uh, running on Linux. I have had some very minor sound issues in the menu, um, but honestly, um, I think this is a good port. It's running nicely. Um, I'm sure everything will be working nicely on release, and I would recommend it. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I did get a review copy, so that may have the amazing A Tech uh, influenced my opinion of the game a little bit. But um, you know, if it, if it was no good, I would tell you it's no good, and it, it certainly is a fun game. I would recommend checking it out, and uh, hopefully, I will have a new Let's Play up soon. So, uh, that has been it for this Let's Look At, Galaxy, and I will see you soon.